we opened up a ton of side missions from that last stream. I enjoyed these areas so much more, mainly because it doesn't feel so claustrophobic as enemies are chasing you down. Jesus. Hey! Health and Daga! And it's dead. Uh, very angry doge. Shinra mutts. Shinra lapdogs. Assault Twister got a ton of those. Thank God I have the ability to dash without equipping the dash materia, because otherwise it would be very, very repetitive. These side missions are very fast. It's not like an Urgeis where it's one giant long dungeon that takes like 10 or 15 minutes to complete. See, because it's fair, like it's straightforward, right? It's going from point A to point B, and you can hug the walls to avoid the random enemies. Maybe it's also I'm playing it on the hardest difficulty. And I'm constantly on my toes because enemies can legit one-shot me in this game. Hey, this is where they got the inspiration for Sestasha in Final Fantasy XIV. Oh shit! Oh god! No, but overall, I'm enjoying this game way more. Way more than the original game. In fact, that's a good question. I wonder if people would feel as connected to Zack if he ultimately hadn't died. Sorry, spoilers. Holy shit! Got some crazy splash damage on you, boy! Dude! Holy god! Almost, almost, almost! Oh, thank god! Oh my god, okay, we're making progress! Now we're making progress! Bitch is not as tanky as he used to be. And all the random encounters happen during those hot spots right there. These little joint areas between the corridors. So if you want to avoid them, you can just hug along the wall. The hard difficulty on Crisis Core Reunion was actually meant to be playable on new game. Whereas in Crisis Core Original, hard mode was only really playable on new game plus. Boom! Beautiful! Twisted headband makes me invulnerable to being knocked out. Status is a pretty, I think, genius part of RPG mechanics because it's it alters the flow of combat, but beyond just pure damage points. I guess the other thing too is I wish we could swap material loadouts mid-battle. And the fact that you can restart your battle right then and there is great because it allows you to experiment and experiment again without having to waste so much time. Some of these glass cannon fights can seem a bit repetitive because you're often trying to spam a very heavy, powerful attack before the enemy can get their attacks in. That can often be the decisive factor in whether you live or die. For her efforts, I'll have to be a grown up here. That's very big of you, Zach. You want a potion? Well, here you are then. Let the baby have her bottle. They can have Yuffie hate Cloud due to his Shinra past, you can have Yuffie hate Barret because of the way that his avalanche seed has been handling the rebellion and fucking everything up. Have all the characters hate each other, but for good reason. Great drama. Activating combat mode. Out of the way. Oh shit, these dudes. No, no. Die, please. Just die. Oh shit. That could have been death right there. Those fat dudes in these side missions can one-shot you with their bellies. And I wish I was joking about that. Oh, shit! Yeah! Glass cannon fight! Seriously? This is bad! Ooh, this is very bad. Very, very bad. Run for it! Guard? Holy shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh, shit here. Are we being serious? Are we being serious? Shit, man! Okay, this dude takes no damage from thunder and fire. Holy shit, dude! Jesus, dude! I might not be ready for this battle. Probably should've did this first. 
Ooh, baby. Oh, God. Shit, I had M Barrier on, too. All right, I don't think we're gonna... We're gonna be able to beat this dude right now. Okay, this could be problematic. Activating combat mode. Oh, very problematic. Die! Die! I like these missions because you get some really good loot, and it's not super long. The levels are not super long, even if they are, you're right, repetitive. And it was to the right. Okay, let's go. Mother! I hate these things. I fucking hate these things. Oh shit, okay, 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 we're good, we're good, we're good. Oh god. Leave me alone, leave me alone, go away! Die! Very, very nervous. I'll cheese this fight, man. I have no shame about that. Holy shit! That battle's difficulty was exacerbated by the incredibly tight quarters. I'm committed. Okay, good, good. Big, big open areas. Tanky as hell, man! Take it. Take it back. Dude! Dude, they don't stun and they just keep coming after you in one touch, you're dead. Yeah, the tight corridors make it really difficult. But also because on hard mode, the enemies are relentless. Like, enemies just charge at you constantly. Activating combat mode. You have to die first. Ah! Shit! Leave me alone! Okay, one down. Okay! All right, all right, oh, okay, let's take a moment, breathe, relax, zen. Yep, keep doing that, keep doing that. No physical? Hey, no physical. Come on, you throw that energy thing. No, no! You piece of shit! Stop doing that! Stop curing yourself! Shit! Oh, I was doing so good, too. Oh, shit, man. Shit ass. Dude, man. That fucking energy shot at the wrong time. Almost got you, bitch. No. Almost. Yes. Yes. That's how you do it. I like that. I appreciate that. I love the scenarios where Sephiroth isn't necessarily fighting, but where he's studying, where he's reading, improving his knowledge. That makes him a far more menacing villain than one that is just pure power and speed and skill, but someone that has a very shrewd mind as well. I'm sorry, but I'm rather busy at the moment. Yes, can't you see, Zach? I'm busy with this lamp. This lamp and this table the latest hold up here with, like, no windows. In constant darkness, just surrounded by Mako-powered lights. It's apparently comprised of only select members. The hardest of the hardcore. It's not for the average fan. The hardest of the hardcore, not for the average fan. She's talking about you, Chad. Report him? Let him go. Report him? Let him go. I'm gonna report him. Hey! Anyone here? I found a suspicious looking guy. <laughs> oh, I didn't think he'd really do it. No! I can't get caught! Somewhere within Midgar, six Wutai spies disguised as civilians are lurking. Find and expose these spies and acquire information on the Crescent unit. You got it. The fan club is now in serious debt. Genesis is killed in action. And now his merch is a failure. I can't stay still anymore! I have to keep running forever! Wow. Um. What the fuck? The book is now a bestseller, and the royalties are pouring in. I thought that the Genesis fan club was going bankrupt from lack of merch sale. No? <laughs> Red Leather, on the other hand, failed in their merchandise push and are now deeply in the red. Oh my god, Genesis fans have competing fan clubs? Like, who are the bigger groupies? 
Yeah, basically like the Final Fantasy VII subreddit. It's as it should be. Dude, these people are fucking savages. Again, man, that Napoleon Dynamite hair. Nothing to see here. I'm a cis civilian, and I'm very busy. Please don't talk to me. Nothing suspicious about this guy. Damn, I'm blown. Yes, I blew him. What? Whoa. Stop right there. There's nowhere left to run. Wow, what the hell? Let's move on ahead. You can be a spy. You're not. You're just admiring these posters of Velvet Foie, Air Midgar. Shinra train. My brother's dream is to become a motor man for a Shinra train. That voice could have auditioned for Twiles of Mana. Oh joy! Angeal? I have to go now. My home planet needs me. Yeah, he's about as contrived as freaking Poochie. A beautiful, sexy pose. I eat soldier and Shinra troopers for breakfast. Oh, what? Whoa, where'd you come from? You're really lucky. I'm a member of the premier hardcore Sephiroth fan club, the Silver Elite. What is the name of Sephiroth's beloved sword? Uh, is it the nail bat? <sighs> Question two. What is Sephiroth's ultimate attack? Oh, we're going with this? Really? I mean, obviously it's Mega Flare, right? Wrong. What? No, Supernova is from FF7 Original. That hasn't happened yet. I'm calling some bullshit on that. It's got to be Omni Slash at this point because Zack, his Octa Slash, comes inspired directly from Sephiroth. Trick Wrong. question. And you? What? Oh, I'm I'm offended. I'm actually offended so by this woman now. Request. And how is it you know Aerith? I'm her boyfriend. It's complicated. It's complicated. He really? gave a Facebook status update. You're being serious. Complicated. Yeah, just just die now. Freaking panky Ornus. Well, I'm a country boy too. From where? Nibelheim. A Mako reactor outside Midgar usually means nothing, nothing else out there. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I smiled so hard. Good news, song. Me and playing this original game when I saw this shit right wow. here. Me and Cloud here are both backwater experts. Oh yeah. Right? Like I guess that's what this is coming down to. I think Crisis Core, the original game should have started somewhere around here as opposed to all the stuff with Angel and Genesis. And I would argue even with Aerith, her encounter with Zack is quite random. It's necessary, but it's random. You just fall down a hole and then you meet her. And then you just peace out, go on another mission. But the chance meeting with Cloud feels so much more organic and earned. And I remember here was when the game really started to pick up a lot more. Zack and Cloud are really the beating heart of this story as being a war story. And this is where Zack gets a lot of his redeeming qualities, his upbeat personality. Cloud, look. Because Cloud being this guy that aspired to become soldier and never made it, and he has to go home with his head hanging low, Zack encouraging him is what allowed him to keep going. Really heartwarming. Like genuinely, truly heartwarming. Two soldiers sharing war stories, you know? I would have been totally okay. fine with this I'll entire game just focusing on Zack and Cloud and everything else just Our revolving around them. And it's wonderful the that the moment that, that Cloud comes to the picture, from there. it gives gotcha. all of Zack's soldier sure ambitions know, more context too. And I'm suddenly just so excited to keep playing this game. Genesis and Angeal are such dead weight in this game. They drag the entire pacing down. They drag Zack down too. Zack is like a reflection of all the characters that he hangs around. And so when we got Aerith, it perked up. And when we got Cloud, all of a sudden, like all of Zack's upbeat attitude has context and purpose. And that's what's so endearing. They transition from the main soldier stuff in the war and the G-type soldiers to Aerith quite abruptly. But the transition from 
the war to Cloud was seamless. It was perfect. It was wonderful, amazing, just as amazing as I remembered it 15 years ago. Mm -hmm.